Okay, so here we have a oxygen therapy crate that I made for my dog Cody Bear. As you can see, it's a regular dog crate and I have wrapped it in a heavy grade plastic. I used duct tape on all the corners and then I used a clear plastic that I got from a comforter cover bag uh, we had lying around um, to make a, a more visible window for the front panel. It's not perfectly air gap sealed. You, know, you can see little holes here. There's probably some leakage around there, but that's all within my, my range of comfort since uh, I definitely want carbon dioxide to exit this thing. I have also left the bottom open here so carbon dioxide can exit. And when I want, I can cover it with this with this uh, little doggy bed or, or something else. And I do that to control the rate of, of uh, airflow out. So if I want to fill this up with, with a higher percentage of oxygen more quickly, then I cover this up with my dog inside uh, or without um, just to get it super oxygenated. And, um, and if he's just going to be in there for a short period of time, then I'll leave it like that so the air gets really saturated uh, or I'll open it. Uh, if he's going to be in there for a longer period of time. Um, or I can adjust it so I can leave a little air gap open, a big air gap open, or no air gap open. Now, um, as you can see, the first thing I did was to uh, wire tie uh, a spare thermometer I had, thermostat I had around the house, so that I could monitor the temperature, because you don't want it to get too hot for your dog, otherwise he can overheat. Uh, in some cases, if it gets too hot, you can put freezer packs in there um, to cool down the air, uh, to cool down your dog. Um, this was apparently a good setup, according to what I had been told by my vet and people online. But what I learned, um, I noticed that my dog would be a little kind of spacey sometimes or sluggish when he came out of oxygen, even though it was helping him breathe. Um, and I thought maybe he was getting too much carbon dioxide, so I ordered a tester. This is what I've got here. Uh, you can see it coming down. My dog had been in there for maybe five or ten minutes. Uh, it got up to about 1800. Um, normal air is, when you're outside, is around 400 parts per million. And uh, stuffy air indoors is between 1000 and 2000. Once you get between two and 5,000, people start having more uh, symptoms of, of too much carbon dioxide. So I try to keep it below 2,000. Um, I'm running, initially what I did is I ran this oxygen tube from my oxygen concentrator here um, directly into this crate. And when I was doing that, even though it was all oxygen, the flow rate was not high enough to push out the carbon dioxide, even with, with this vent open, and even when I opened up the side over here, which I did temporarily, um, I was quickly getting numbers over 2,000, at which point um, I stopped that method. So what I did is, for about $8, I went online to a popular auction site, and I bought this face mask Venturi kit. What these things do, each one is rated for a different amount, this one is 50% oxygen. Uh, so it takes the oxygen flow, and as the oxygen flows through here, there's that little hole in there, it sucks in fresh air, and so you get a mixture of fresh air and oxygen. This would be 50%. Right now I'm running a 40%. 40% uh, is supposed to be good for things like chronic bronchitis and other uh, breathing issues similar to what my dog has. Um, my dog also has pulmonary hypertension as a result of his breathing issues. Uh, so what I'm doing is I'm using the oxygen therapy uh, to reduce his need for uh, his, his low oxygen levels uh, in the theory that it will help reduce his pulmonary hypertension. And it seems to be helping him. Uh, his stamina is improving. And studies on human beings show that long-term continuous oxygen therapy can reverse pulmonary hypertension when it's secondary to chronic bronchitis or other um, hypoxic lung conditions. So you can see, as I've had the door open, the carbon dioxide levels are coming down. They're now down to 826. 
You can buy an oxygen meter. I could not find a reliable one online that seemed affordable, so I did not do that. I figure I've got 40% oxygen coming in here, filling this thing up. With my carbon dioxide meter, I can monitor the carbon dioxide levels and make sure it doesn't get too high. I also noticed that when I close this up, if my dog isn't in there, the carbon dioxide levels, which might be normally 500 or 530 in my house, will drop down close to 400. So at that point, I know that the carbon dioxide levels in the crate are lower than the oxygen levels outside of the crate, which tells me that the oxygenated air is displacing some of the carbon dioxide, and I'm, I have a working system here. I've also used lower percentage venturis um, in order to experiment with lower carbon dioxide levels, but uh, right now I'm more focused on getting him higher concentrations of oxygen in short periods of time because now that he's feeling better, uh, when I put him in here, he starts barking and he wants to get out. Um, the more hyper he gets in there where he's breathing hard and barking, the higher the carbon dioxide levels. So they might get up to 1800, 1900, sometimes 2000 if he's really excited and he's been in there for a while. Whereas if he's just chilling, it might be around 1000, 1200, something like that. Um, I definitely had lower carbon dioxide levels with 31% um, uh, oxygen uh, mixture. Um, and it was helping him, but I, I figured it was safe to bump him up to the 40% because I'm still under 2000 still like being in an office building or a party or something like that where the carbon dioxide levels uh, get a little bit higher than optimal. Uh, so this is my system. We bought this oxygen concentrator. Uh, it was either Letgo or Facebook uh, Marketplace. Um, it was a couple hundred bucks. Somebody had purchased it uh, for a family member. The family member never used it uh, and so they were selling it uh, at a discount. Uh, you can buy them used make sure that they work functionally and are clean and you get some fresh tubing and there's no leaks and things like that. I keep mine set as high as it'll go on five uh, liters per minute um, since I'm trying to push as much air into the Venturi to keep the oxygen levels concentrated uh, for my dog. Um, so there you have it. I have found for him uh, that warm air opens up his bronchial tubes or his airways um, he also has some sort of restrictive airway situation it responds very well to acupuncture and it responds well to warm air uh, either outdoors or low temperatures in a sauna um, and so I also have this little space heater here that I keep next to the oxygen tent because it's winter time and so if the house dips down to 70 or 72 degrees I've noticed that it it makes his breathing a little bit more difficult when he wakes up so uh, I can use this to control the temperature. I try to keep it around 77 or 78. Once it gets up to 80, he starts panting a little bit more. Um, and so I don't like to keep him in as long when it's around 80. So this way I can just control this and uh, sort of keep him in a nice, you know, mid to upper 70s uh, where he seems to breathe best. Um, and so that's, that's his little setup right there. And uh, I hope it helps you. Bye-bye.